Your Honor? It's been an honor, Your Honor. Long live the death penalty. Of all the professions, where would you place a pool hustler in terms of trust? I, I wouldn't trust them at all. Not at all? No. What about that time you were in the pub and you lost all that money? Well, that's part of the reason why I wouldn't trust them. Learned your lesson? Absolutely. Yeah, it took you about eight games, mind you. I was going to win the next one as well. Mm. You could look at it like that. That's the reasonable way to look at it. Yeah, if you lost. Yes. How are we? Ah, uh, I'm alright. A smashing episode this week. It wasn't bad at all, was it? Right into the pack. There you go. Deep screw. Break it all up. Bit of English as they say in the States. Never heard that used. Have you not? No. You don't watch, I mean, I know you're a, a snooker fan, Ian. You don't watch pool? From time to time. Um, with Squinny, no. Cup and so on. But yeah. The Americans call side English. So you'd put some uh, left English as opposed to left hand side. Okay. That's interesting hmm. and weird. I suppose all these terms are weird if you look at them closely. If they're not the ones that you use. Yeah. Or even some of the ones that we use. Very. Yeah. Czech yeah. side. Exactly. Someone from Prague. Chinese snooker. Oh, racist. Apparently. It is. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's apparently a thing. Yeah, you wouldn't say it anymore. Dennis Taylor, still, he used to say it quite a bit until recently, and I think he was told by the, the bosses at the BBC, yeah, you probably shouldn't say that anymore. Fair but enough. Let's stop talking about the, <laughs> the intricacies of... Billiards. Yeah, you're okay then, yeah? Not too bad. Yourself, Jerry? I can. I'm not too bad. Did you, did you enjoy this week's episode? I did. It was good. I must admit, I'm a sucker for a, a pool hall-based movie, TV show. Takes you back a wee bit. It does, but I like it. I feel comfortable. I do enjoy a bar and a game of pool. And I think yeah, there's been plenty of classic movies. Obviously, The Colour of Hammer, which we're discussing this week, was uh, the, the name has been taken from The Colour of Money. Tom Cruise and Paul Newman from around about what eighty seven? I wouldn't. I don't know. This episode only came out in January eighty seven, didn't oh, it? Oh yeah, sorry. So it must have been eighty six. Guess so. I've not seen that movie. <laughs> there's, Are a you gonna... <laughs> there's a surprise. And I assume you've not seen the the Hustler then, the original. Nope. What's your favourite Paul Newman movie? Oh, uh, well, I've got to say that's a tricky one, but it's not uh, the Sting. Okay, I think Cars. Mm, yeah, decent. I prefer, I've discussed this before, I feel I prefer Doc Hollywood. It's a rip-up of cars though, isn't it? <laughs> right, stop it. Where do we begin? Probably with my summary, I would imagine. Crack on. In The Colour of Hammer, we meet a hardline judge with an affection for harsh sentencing and a favourite of Hammer's. When he's blackmailed into letting a mobster walk free and then murdered, Sledge and Dory go looking for answers. A vital piece of evidence leads the officers to a seedy pool hall where hustlers are known to operate. But with the case on the line, can Hammer shoot a perfect rack, or has he finally met his match? Thank you for that golden break, Ian. Do you know what a golden break is? Is that when you pot something? No, it's when you pot the nine ball off the break. Right, that doesn't count though, you don't win from that, do you? Yes, you do. You do win from that? Yep. Okay. Happened a few times and it's happened in some big frames of big matches. That would be really annoying if you were the other person. Because it's not something you can do strategically, obviously. No, there's a massive amount of luck involved. Yeah. Doesn't normally happen, but yeah, you see them now and again. Very brief shot we begin with of a pool hall. Very to brief. To set the scene. Yeah. We head over to the precinct, don't we? Yes. And Hammer has got a new strategy. Which is? He's going to arrest people before they commit crimes because it's Crime Prevention Week. I think it's a fairly reasonable strategy to take. Well, what could go wrong? Not a lot. Except this guy is clearly meant to be a nerd. Yeah, not likely to have committed crimes other than probably espionage, hacking. Sledge is eager to watch the television. This is unusual. But there is an interview with a judge, a particularly famous judge. Yeah, I and mean, Trunk notes that Sledge hasn't been this excited to watch TV since they put World War II footage into colour. <laughs> this judge is called uh, Liam Jackson and he's a, an extreme right-wing nut job. I was thinking that he'll probably be called... To the Supreme Court by Trump. That happens, yeah. doesn't it? The, the, the president selects his... I, I do wonder if he's a, a Scalia type. They only select when someone dies or res retires. So there's a set number. There's nine. At the moment there's eight because the Congress is refusing to endorse Obama's last selection. 
But yeah, I, Antonin Salia, who was probably not pronounced that way, who recently died, was the kind of right wing sort of judge. Mm. And I got the feeling that was who this was based on. Okay. So was he still uh, practicing? Was he still working when he died? Or was he retired? Yeah, no, he was in the Supreme Court right up until he died. Okay. That's well, why he, there's a vacancy. How old was he? He wasn't even that old. I think he was only in his late 70s, maybe. That's quite an age to be working in that profession. He certainly wasn't the oldest on the Supreme Court. Really? That yeah. That is old, isn't it? Yeah. They, yeah, they just, yeah, some of them just hang around. Yeah, not entirely comfortable with there's, that. There's one in particular who they say just falls asleep during the cases and then wakes up to vote the way he knew he was going to vote at the start. Mm. Fair enough. We see this interview and we find out his nickname is The Hanging Judge. Yes. And he is about as unhinged as Hammer himself. Oh, absolutely. And um, they ask him where he stands in the electric chair. He tells them it's right next to the switch. Sledge is, as we can imagine, in awe of this man. And I think he sees them as a team. Not necessarily physically close, but they, they work together to clean the streets of crime. Yeah. After the interview, we get a good little moment with Dory and Trunk, which I think we get a few in this episode. You kind of see a bit of their affection for Hammer. And it's immediately offset by Hammer being Hammer. Well, Dory is defending Hammer to Trunk. Yeah. And in the background, what do we see that sweeps the legs from her argument? Oh, I, I didn't see what he was doing. Was he trying to make coffee or something? So whatever he was trying to do didn't work, so he pulled out his gun and shot yeah. the device. It was a coffee machine. Right. I understand how he feels. No, absolutely. I've got no milk tonight in my coffee. I'm really <laughs> upset. I would have shot if I had a gun. Yep. None in my tea. Mm. So, to try and calm Sledge down, they go for a walk in the park. I like this. It's a change of scenery. I've not seen it before. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And Dory is trying to get Hammer to appreciate nature. Did this walk in the park make you think about where the perfect place to keep your umbrella is? It did, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Columbo the Bye Bye Sky High IQ murder episode. Yes. So, S Sledge has insisted that he is a lover of nature. And he demonstrates it. Yeah, by getting to close contact. Very close. What does he do? He just stomps in the flowers and he's, it's like he deliberately goes for the flowers. <laughs> Crushes, stubs them out as if it's a, a cigarette butt. Yeah. And uh, he's going to take Dory for an ice cream. Mm -hmm. So obviously, feeling generous. Columbo went for an ice cream in that episode as well. He did. It's not the only thing that we hear about Hammer buying for Dory in this episode as well. No, we'll get to that. Yeah. A little something going on there. Yeah. Coincidentally, they bump into the judge who is eating lunch on the park bench. Your Honor, I'd like you to meet my partner, Dory Duro. A pleasure to meet you, Your Honor. Pleasure. She's a pacifist. So you're hearing cases on park benches now, huh, Judge? No, I've eaten my lunch here every day for the last 10 years. It's very relaxing. Want to make something of it? Isn't he something? Well, it must be a great responsibility being a judge. It's all in the execution. Well, the way I figure it, Your Honor, if there were a few more judges like you and a few more cops like me, there'd be no criminals on the streets. Of course, possibly there'd be no people on the streets either, but then you can't have everything. Sledge, you really have to be going. We then get the clip from the top of the show following that, obviously, about the death penalty. We do. And then uh, Dory departs before a hammer asks for an autograph. Yeah, he doesn't have any paper, though, so he has to use the... <laughs> The napkin that's been wrapped around his ice cream is disgusting. As Sledge leaves, the judge is then approached by a mysterious and glamorous woman who flatters him and invites him to join her. Did you enjoy her, her opening exchange with him? Remind me. Well, he sa she says to him, may I sit here? And he says, certainly, approach the bench. <laughs> I think everything he says is a joke, essentially, from here on. So she obviously charms him and he decides to call his verdict of the afternoon early. Yes, it's guilty. And we head over to Coos Arus Pool Hall. Not the most imaginatively named pool hall. Nah. They're playing pool and the judge is clearly winning. Yes, and he says that he would let this woman win a game but he never gives clemency. She suggests a wager and the judge initially offers, I think, sex to the winner. Yes, uh, but she means either way. <laughs> He is then effectively tricked into agreeing to a uh, 100, is it 150,000 or? Well, she says 50,000, he says, he's laughing saying 150,000, but he's not taking it seriously. 
And he is then promptly hustled. Yes, you've got a, a fellow watching through a peephole at the same time. I didn't quite catch you. I think it's something like Iron Mike Heckles Mill. Or... Uh, yeah, I just call him Iron Mike. Iron Mike. I'm not sure if it's bad continuity or a joke, but the pool shots, the balls on the table just keep changing <laughs> randomly. Like, she'll be lining up a shot on one ball and a different ball yeah. will be going, and then there's a group of balls and there's no balls. <laughs> I'm not sure if it was a joke uh, that was scripted, but I think, you know, just during the filming of it, they thought, ah, we'll leave that in. Because it's hilarious. Yeah. It's not bad. I quite enjoyed that. The judge refuses to cough up and he claims that there have been no witnesses until Iron Mike, as you mentioned, and some henchmen appear from the office. And they show him that it's been recorded on VHS and the Betamax. Yep. I still don't understand why this is a problem for him because... Gambling's illegal, so the contract's not enforceable, even if it is recorded. Mm, I know. Like, he could have simply walked away. I suppose he, he might have do. been in trouble for gambling, but I think... But he didn't gamble. Looking at what he said, he, looked, he was clearly laughing, thinking it was a joke. Yeah, if they show that film to anyone, yeah, he did not believe that it was a genuine wager, a genuine bet. Yeah, but for whatever reason, he, perhaps thinking how he would look at it as a judge and find the person guilty, he concedes and we hear about what he does next um, back at the precinct. They prevent him from leaving and suggest that they, they have a solution. They will take out the wager in trade. Yes. So, yeah, we're back to the precinct and Trunk appears to take pleasure in Hammer's dismay as they watch a TV report that reveals that the judge has dismissed all charges against a very high-profile mob boss. Yeah, his mother testified against him. The judge leaves the courthouse, but he has no comment for... Ah, oh, this was, I meant to call you this at the top of the show. A probing toad? Yeah. Unlucky. Well, probing toad. I forgot, <laughs> I'll call you now, you're probing toad. Thanks. Sledge can't understand why he would let the scum off and he decides to go and talk to him. Meanwhile, the judge is calling Iron Mike mm -hmm. and saying he's going to throw himself in the mercy of the court in hopes that he doesn't draw himself as a judge because then he'll get the death penalty. <laughs> I think that's my favourite line of the episode. <laughs> I quite enjoyed the, the part that followed when... <laughs> Iron Mike realises that one of the henchmen has fed steak to his goldfish <laughs> and puts what I assume must be like Alka-Seltzer type thing, yeah, which yeah, I'm going to help I, the goldfish at all. I, I said that, I mean, yeah, exactly. I, I said that, that was dissolve it. into the water. Yeah, and we hear him send Lana to shop. Sorry, he means kill and resolve this problem. And I'll deal with it once and for all. So we're over to the judge's home and she arrives with her cue and a cigar. He's quite surprised that she's been able to gain access to the house. Yeah, I would have thought so. Someone of his stature, his uh, infamy. She explains though how she got in. Which was? She used the doggy door. She says that she has uh, come over to give him something from her and Iron Mike. She then gets close to him and as they are embracing, she pulls out a knife or a sword from her queue. Yes, yeah, stabs him through the back. As he falls, he's got one final question. Yes, he wants to know what did Iron Mike want to give him? <laughs> She says, his condolences. An unhappy Sledge and Dory arrive to find the door open. Hammer's not taking the judge's death as an excuse. No. <laughs> not to answer some questions. Well, he does give the judge a piece of his mind before Dory points out that he is in fact dead. Another familiar face appears. When? Oh, Blades comes in shortly, well, a wee bit later on. Mm -hmm. It's now a crime scene. And he's impressed with the care that the killer took in their work. Yeah, he likes it. He's touched that someone took pride in their work and yeah. delivered a clean wound. All he found was blue chalk under his fingernails. Yeah. Did you notice that, again, that seems to be whenever Blates is there, Sledge eats from nobody who's munching on a, a burger. I didn't even notice. Did you know? No. <laughs> Just pulls one out. Quite a big burger as well. I saw in the comments recently on the Sledgecast, or the Sledgehammer Podcast, um, dot com comments someone noticing that Sledge wears an interesting array of ties and it's not something I've noticed yet so mm. need to keep an eye out for that one going forward as well. Mm, let's do so. I mean he does have a very unique and distinct style. He yeah, certainly does. There's a funny smell in the judge's drawing room. Yes <laughs> and <laughs> okay you've mentioned this earlier what happens? Well Hammer wonders whether it's the disgusting perfume he got for Dory. <laughs> so Either she's already told him the perfume's disgusting or he knew himself. I think he knew. So he deliberately got her a bad perfume. So it's like, here's some perfume, but I don't really like you because it's disgusting. Yeah, no, I think so. So sort of adolescent thing. I think he would go and buy, maybe he would go and buy some cheap perfume from like the equivalent of a, a pound shop. Knowing think, that it's garbage, but he, he gives something because he's, he's 
aware enough that he has to, at Christmas time, perhaps exchange gifts. It's a tradition. But he's not going to invest any money or thought or effort into it. So he says, okay, oh, here right. you go. So you don't think it's because he wants to get her perfume because he likes her, but he doesn't want to get her good perfume because then she might realise that he likes her, so he gets her bad perfume. It could be that as well. Who knows? She recognises the smell anyway. It's Cuban cigar, and she knows that the, the perfume is worse. Back over to the precinct and... Well, they don't know. They don't have another clue before they leave, or two more clues. There's no ashtray. Yeah. Which you would expect a smoker and sledge says, I would just use the carpet because he's rich. And they find a book of matches. Quite Columbo-esque. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Columbo used that exact clue. So we head back to the precinct. Dory goes through the judge's file. And she mentions that it states that he was a fan of billiards. Or certainly Q. Sports. Sport, yeah. yeah. Oh, are we going to debate whether it's a sport or not? No, we're not going to have that debate. <laughs> and Sledge puts the blue chalk and the matches from the pool hall together. Did you like his little spiel about the clue? Remind me. It went really well. It was uh, the blue chalk, the pool chalk. He chalked the cue, a clue. Clue? What cue? Clue. I picked these up off the judge's day. <laughs> it, was it was good. Really good. Yeah. It was good uh, work from the two of the actors there. I thought it was nicely delivered. He admits, however, that the cue clue means nothing at all at the moment. So they decide to talk to Trunk, where they are interrupted by the reporter. I just got off the phone with the commissioner. He's been yelling at me every hour on the hour. Well, now you know what it feels like. He wants the judge's murder solved yesterday. Do you have any hard evidence I can go on? We've got something better than that, sir. Oh, that's terrific. I'll tell the commissioner. What is it? A hunch. God, Hammer. No, no, but it's a good one. You see, the coroner found blue chalk under the judge's fingernails. Then we found out the judge was a pool player. I found these matches on the judge's desk. They're from a pool hall called Q's R Us. Now, what if the judge was hustled into letting that goon go? I'm going down to the pool hall right now and see if I can get hustled. Just a minute, Hammer. This case is too important to trust to you and your hunch. I'm going with you. Captain Trunk, I'm reporting live. Any new developments on the Jackson murder case? Um... Actually, I can't... Um, I'm Inspector Sledgehammer. What the captain's trying to say is we just discovered some concrete evidence that will crack this case by tomorrow morning. We see that last part of the scene through the TV of Q's or Us. Iron Mike and I think we find the girl's called Lana. Mm -hmm. They discuss Hammer. She's kind of sanguine. She doesn't think that he's onto them. Um, and then she thumps Iron Mike and <laughs> says, if I wanted a man who whined... I date, I think she says Dick Abbott? Nope, Dick Cavett. Dick Cavett. Okay, okay, so Dick, this is the only thing that I think may be slightly off and perhaps not the type of thing that would be written today. Okay. Okay, so Dick Cavett, I've watched actually quite a lot of his stuff on YouTube. Right. He was, a, I think, a comedian singer, a lot of work in The Tonight Show, but he had his own talk show for a number right. of years. So he interviewed a lot of the big, the big stars of the day. Very famous man in the States, certainly. But... He was a high-profile, and maybe one of the first, actually, high-profile uh, sufferers of depression. Okay. And it was quite well known that he was, I think he was the first to really come out and discuss it. Or the biggest, I suppose, biggest star, perhaps, at the time, who openly discussed this and was well known to suffer from it. Okay. So, I think that... Well, she's a bad guy. She's a bad guy. But they did get someone who whines. Yeah. It's unfortunate. There's a little off, I think. Fair enough. Uh, of course, I'm reading that into that's what she meant, maybe something else I'm missing. Sure. Back at the precinct, Trunk has a, a two-sided assessment of Hammer's intervention. Yes, he praises Sledge and tells him that the fake disclosure on the TV might just work. But... but yeah, he's not happy that, <laughs> that um, Hammer took his close-up. <laughs> never push him out of a close-up again. It's not that... Dissimilar to the approach Hammer took when he was trying to save Trunk's life and they put the fake news report out that Trunk had died. It's the same sort of idea, put out fake news and see if you can flush out the... Yep. As they enter the elevator, Dory asks Sledge why he thinks he can shoot pool, and how does he respond? Well, he, he highlights the word shoot and points out that he's an expert at that. He's the best there is when it comes to shooting. Yeah. Back to the pool hall. Sledge manages to irritate and harm Trunk, even when playing pool. To and be fair to Hammer, Trunk is being stupid. Would you put your hands inside the cushion on a pool yeah, table for do that. Or stand there not paying attention to balls flying off the table? Yeah. 
we'll give Sledge that. When Trunk leaves to apparently phone to order a, or book a CAT scan, Lana approaches the table and Sledge is his usual charming self to a lady. <laughs> she wants to play pool with him and he says, why don't you go get your ears pierced or something? <laughs> Nails painted, that type of stuff. <laughs> he is playing hard to get. Yeah, she pushes it and he says, just beat it girly before someone sees me talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> he eventually agrees to play for $100 as we see Dory. She's sniffing ashtrays. Yeah, she's trying to find the Cuban cigar scent, but there's a fellow watching her who thinks she's up for something else. Mm. Hammer plays and he wins the initial hundred dollars easily and takes the money just to teach her a lesson. I mean, he wouldn't normally. Well, gambling is illegal. Of course. He says, I'm just, I'm teaching you a lesson. She obviously doesn't learn her lesson because she immediately wants a double or nothing. And crushes him and keeps crushing him to an interesting soundtrack. Yeah, it's a... Uh, Manator by Hollow Notes. It's a good song. Great song. And while it's playing, uh, this other fellow approaches Dory with an ashtray, shoves it in her face and then tries to kiss her and she takes care of him quite swiftly. You do, You wouldn't mess with Dory. Oh, you wouldn't go near Dory. Well, I would like to go near her. But yeah, but you, you wouldn't risk it. That, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't approach her in that way. No, not when she's working. Well, maybe if she's working, but I'd be gentlemanly and courteous. Yeah, suave and charming. Try to be. <laughs> <laughs> How long could you keep that up for? <laughs> How I'd end up getting flipped over the pool table. That's probably inevitable. Without a doubt. In any case, Sledge wants one last chance to try and win his money back. I think you owe me the grand total of $50,000. Give me one more chance. No. I'll play a double or nothing. No. Shouldn't you give me one more chance? Yeah. Yes! Like you found your hustler. Oh, no kidding, Darrow. Let's take her in. Not yet. I got one more game to play. What are you gonna do if she wins? Shoot her. Okay. Double or nothing. You break. If you want me, come and get me. I don't understand. This next game, Hammer obviously plays a series of flukes and some good shots and he wins, but why did it matter whether he won or not? I don't know. <laughs> He's going to arrest them anyway. <laughs> well, maybe he wants his money back. He has handed over cash. And until... He they... hasn't handed over $50,000 in cash, has he? No. No, it's just a theoretical debt. Yeah. I mean, how could you even... Why, as a hustler, you, hustlers operate with, with cash. Yeah, why I mean, would you play for that Unlikely, level? most people don't have 50 grand to give you anyway. So... Unless she knew he's a police officer and she thought she could blackmail him for something else. Ah, maybe. To, like, get her off with the murder. Good thinking. So, yeah, as you say, Sledge... Hustle is a hustler, and after he wins, he pulls out his gun, and Iron Mike runs from the office for the final fight scene this week. Did you enjoy Iron Mike's attempts to break the bottle? <laughs> well, that's it. So Sledge is fighting Lana. Yep. Trunk is fighting a henchman. Yep. And Dory is facing off against Iron Mike. Yes. What does Iron Mike do? Well, he takes this glass bottle, a wine bottle or something. He's trying to smash it on the bar to threaten Dory with it. <laughs> but he just keeps knocking it off the bar and nothing happens. Well, the scene keeps cutting, so it's even funnier yeah. because you see him try once and it goes back to Sledge and you see again, he's still trying to do this. How does Dory help him? Well, she takes it off him, smashes it, gives him the broken bottle back and then when he goes to attack her with it, she knocks him out. One of her famous high kicks. Yes. Patented. Meanwhile, um, Lana's got uh, the weapon out of her pool cue, the knife yep. slash sword thing. She's taking a, a swipe at Sledge and Says she's going to take his arm off next. Mm -hmm. Sledge says if she does, he'll be she'll be paying for his suit. Or his yeah, jacket. for his jacket. Yeah. <laughs> How does Sledge eventually take her down? Well, he taunts her to get up on the table like a man, then jumps off the table and <laughs> shoots the cue ball at her to trip her up. Um, which I think she might see happen coming, but anyway, she goes down. Everyone's arrested, and the good guys win again. We have the epilogue. The gang are led away, and. Dory compliments Sledge's pool playing before he demos a jump shot. He tells um, the captain that he's finally mastered this jump shot and he wants to show it off for him. Trunk seems to have learned his lesson, so he stands behind Hammer. What happens next? Well, Hammer's shot hits the corner of the cushion and then he ducks as it flies over his head and smacks Trunk square between the eyes. And there we have it. So, fun episode. It was, it was. Plot a bit weaker, I suppose, this week. Or, yeah. or, or, or was it? Well, is that fair? There's a lot of things that didn't make sense, like why anyone went along with the hustlers and didn't just tell them to get lost. 
Well, that's it. I think so. I think the plot is there. You know, you have a judge who has been blackmailed. Yeah, it's just the mechanics of that. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not been implemented as robustly as what it might be. But again, it's, it's a comedy show. Yeah. Comedy show doesn't have to. Yeah. Um. Anything you want to add before we head over to the trivia and production? I don't think so. I quite like that. I like the. And he looked quite familiar. The fellow who played. Iron Mike, he reminded me a bit of the guy that had been playing the snitches in the previous episodes with that sort of same hairdo. Okay, well let's get to that. The episode was first broadcast on the 31st of January 1987, directed by Bruce Bilson. He was born in 1928 and most famous for Hogan's Heroes, Get Smart, The Odd Couple, Doris Day Show, BG and the Bear, The Fall Guy, Hotel and Spencer for Hire. Mert Rich and Brian Pollock were again the writing team behind this episode. Guest stars include Alan Rich, who played Judge Liam Jackson. No relation, as far as I can tell, to Mert Rich. Okay. He was born in 1926. He has been in Serpico, NYPD Blue, House, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Bad Guys, which is a 1986 wrestling movie. Absolutely dreadful. But I bought it as a kid. And you love it? It's one of these movies that I watched over and over again as a kid. So it's got a it's got a, a place in my heart somewhere it's garbage he's got one of these sort of malleable faces that looks like he ought to be an actor yeah yeah well I mean he's a renowned character actor yeah. he was also in Happy Days Hill Street Blues Naked City and an episode of Mrs. Columbo Martine Beswick or Beswick played Lana she was born in 1941 and she was a she was twice a, a Bond girl in Thunderball and From Russia With Love she was also in One Million Years BC Santa Barbara Quincy and is a former Miss Jamaica. Okay. Apparently now she owns a removal business in London and is retired from the acting profession. She's only going to be about 75. Can't see her logging sofas and fridges up four flights of sta stairs. I would have thought that Bond girls would have had a convention circuit that they could make some money off of. Yeah. I'm sure they do if they want to. Perhaps she doesn't yeah, want maybe to. Maybe not. Right. Limelight friendly. No? Yeah. Anthony James played Iron Mike. He was born in 1942. His last on-screen appearance was in Unforgiven, the 1992 Clint Eastwood movie. Okay. He was also in High Plains Drifter, uh, Naked Gun 2.5, The A-Team, Buck Rogers, Ironside, Gunsmoke and Star Trek The Next Generation. There you go. But he wasn't one of the snitches previously. No, he just had that same sort of... Yeah, snitchy early. looking face, yeah. Favourite line this week? Oh, let me think. Well, you're thinking, I will tell you mine. It's the one I mentioned earlier. That he hoped he wouldn't get himself in court because he would definitely get the death penalty. I think I would go nice and simple with um, Hammer telling Trunk that now you know how it feels. Mm, yeah, so tried that, that. Kind of relates to what's happened in the past as well. Next week we've got Brother, Can You Spare a Crime? Well, let's find out what happens in that one. Is it about Dory's brother, Sledge's brother? You'll have to wait and see. <sighs> Exciting. Okay, do you want to wrap things up here, Ian? Well, we've got the usual ending spiel so folk who've already rated and reviewed us and follow us on social media can turn off now the rest of you pay attention we really would appreciate if you spend a minute or two rating reviewing subscribing to the show on itunes even if it's not your preferred podcast platform because it helps more people find the show which helps the show do a bit better which is great for all of us and it's great for hopefully for sledgehammer if more folk go back and start watching it again if you want to chat with us about the episode you can get us on social media we're on both Twitter and Facebook at Sledgecast or you can come on to sledgehammerpodcast.com where there's comments on all the episodes and we can discuss them in turn and I think that's us for this week Jerry I think it is so we'll see everybody next week cheerio bye bye